It's a hit. It's a flop. Bravo loves it. Bravo says it's too ghetto. It's an eight-part series. Bravo says it's a limited series. What is going on with Portia's spinoff? I know you all have heard a lot of things from a lot of different people, but I have the absolute truth about what's going on behind the scenes and how everything will probably play out. I'm going to reveal all those details to you and more right after this. What's up, Kim folk, and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, do me a favor and subscribe. And if you already are subscribed, do me a favor and get notified so you'll know whenever I upload new videos to the channel. All right, Kim folk, come on into the house. We have a lot to talk about, and it centers around the truth about Porsche spinoff. Is it a hit? Is it a flop? Does Bravo, does Bravo love it? Does Bravo think it's too ghetto? Is it going to be an eight-part series or is it going to be a limited-part series? All of those questions I am going to answer for you right now. So, here's the thing. A lot of you guys have been seeing a lot of YouTubers saying different things about Porsche's new spinoff. A lot of difference of opinions, I will admit. But here is the truth about her spinoff. From the Bravo's perspective, when they look at the metrics, and the things on reality TV shows that drive up ratings, Portia spinoff has them. When they see uh, old episodes of Real Housewives of Potomac, Beverly Hills, and Atlanta, and so forth and so on, when they see those ratings metrics, they look at those episodes and see what happened during those episodes. And what happened? Either it was a big scandal or a big altercation, whether it was verbal or physical. So, when you look at Porsche's spinoff, it has those two very important metrics. It has a big scandal, and it has what appears to be a physical altercation. Now, based on past metrics, those two things equal to high ratings, right? High ratings. Now, here is the variable. Allegedly, Bravo will be looking for the fans and seeing how they are reacting to all of this drama. And if the fans deem it to be too ghetto or too off-brand for Bravo, or if they just simply decide to turn it off and not watch it all, then we probably can expect Porsche spinoff to only get maybe three or four episodes and be done. However, if Bravo executives look at the metrics and see that ratings are high, whether people are watching to hate watch or watching just because they are interested in Porsche's life, then you can bet your last dollar that Porsche will be getting a second season. Now, here's the thing about that metric system of drama and drama and scandal. In order for you to get high ratings and continue to have high high ratings, you have to continue the drama. So the question is. Portia and her family seemed like they uh, delivered on this first season of her spinoff with the drama and with the scandal. But the question is, if they get a second season, can they keep it going? That is yet to be made. That is yet to be seen. However, when you hear individuals talk about on YouTube or in blog posts or online, and when you hear them saying that you know Portia's spinoff is a hit, you know I've even said it, it's a hit. We're talking about it is a hit in metrics terms, in terms of ratings draw, because it has a big scandal call uh, tied to it, and also because it has what appears to be a physical altercation. When you hear other people say it's a flop, it's not good if it's based on what Bravo's brand is, then they're referring to the fact that there's a lot of quote unquote ghetto or quote unquote ratchet behavior that is not on brand with Bravo and it could potentially turn away some of the audience and not watch it all. And so they're pretty much assuming that's what's going to happen and it's going to be an automatic flop. And then we hear other people say it's going to be a flop. They're speaking from in terms of they're just not fans of Portia and they will not be watching. Now it's going to be hard to gauge you know how many of those people are out there. 
But there is another variable in this entire situation. It also comes to the fact of who are Portia's fans, and they tend to skew younger. If you take a look on social media outside of um, YouTube and or a little bit of Twitter and just primarily focus on Instagram, Portia's reality show, her spinoff, gets great reviews from her younger demographics who oftentimes seem to be entertained by physical altercations and big scandals. The question is, the question is will that demographic turn on their TVs and watch? Now, research says yes and maybe no because those individuals tend to watch their television through piracy websites and through uh, short clips on social media via, via Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. And so now the question is, will they tune in? Because overwhelmingly, they think it's going to produce great TV. But will they actually put in the work and watch their fave? That is yet to remain seen. And the last thing, Kim Folk, is this. We have seen a turn in the way we consume reality television. I think it's because of the seriousness of the pandemic and also because of all of the social media activism that we were doing before and during the pandemic. People have had a chance to be at home a lot more than they have in the past. And what that means is they have been able to consume a variety of different types of entertainment. Some ratchet entertainment and also some very thought provoking entertainment. And what that brought was a, a wider palette when it comes to their television and entertainment consumption and what they want to see. And so now we're beginning to see a turn away from that ratchet debauchery that we see on certain reality television shows where women are constantly fighting and bickering and arguing and, and also getting into physical altercations. Now we're seeing an audience who want to see the actual real life of, of these reality TV stars. What are some things they're really struggling with? How are they working to overcome that struggle? And how are they maintaining being a businesswoman, a wife, a girlfriend while doing so? A lot of that pettiness and drama, they just don't seem to have an appetite for it now. And it's not just for Bravo. That is across the board. So, while some people may think that this new season of Real Housewives of Atlanta may actually be boring because they don't have the top housewives who brought the most drama, Bravo may be ahead of the curve in giving us real life, uh, a real life look inside the lives of these ladies and seeing some of the things that they are working through and they are struggling with and how they are overcoming it. And that can serve as an inspiration to other women watching the show. Now, that is just my guess. But we will see how all this works out, not only for Real Housewives of Atlanta, but also for Portia. My bet is this. I think Portia's reality television show on the front end is going to get great reviews and great viewership. However, as the drama continues to progress, I think people are going to get tired of it. And they may become very exhausted by the repeat of the storyline to where they might just tune out. And by the time we get to the end of her, her, her series run, whether it's eight episodes or four episodes, we may see an exhausted viewer who probably won't have the appetite for a second season. I don't know, but we'll see. Kim Folk, I want to know what you think down below in the comment section. Do you think Porsche spinoff is going to do really well? Or do you think people in general are just tired of seeing that same old, same old drama of infighting and physical altercations and they want to see something more real? Let me know how you think down in the comments section below. All right, Kim folk, that's all I have. If you enjoyed this video, as always, please like, share, subscribe, comment, and I see you guys over on the next one. Peace.